Hi, I'm Jessica Califano, Director of Community Support and Publishing at Adafruit Industries. We're here in San Diego at Qualcomm headquarters for episode three of our Women in Hardware interview series presented by Adafruit and Hackster. Today we're going to talk with Tia Cassett, Senior Director of Product Management at Qualcomm Technologies, and Mary Youngman, Director of Manufacturing and Procurement at Adafruit Industries, about embedded computing, supply chain management, and more. Hi Tia, hi Mary, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to start out, I'd like to ask both of you, um, you know, what has been your career trajectory and uh, how did you get to where you are today? So, um, so I've been at Qualcomm for a little over 20 years, but what led me to Qualcomm is my previous experience working at this RF engineering company uh, that specialized, or it only did, it was a new company, that only did the um, engineering services for the deployment of these mobile networks. These wire Back then we said wireless networks. We were the only company that was offering this sort of service at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had to create products to help uh, with the services that we offered. So we had um, propagation modeling software because when you put up cell sites, you know, it, it's not you, you can't just pop them anywhere, it has to be right. part of a, an overall design. And, and back then, it was just amps and in Europe, GSM. So, we had the propagation modeling software, and then we also had drive test equipment where you drive around and you um, want to test the network once you either have a temporary site up there or a permanent site, and then we had the software to collect the data and also post-process it. And then when the data was post-processed, it got merged back into the modeling software to fine-tune your model, which is actually really, really interesting and really cool. And as the services, we would do the services, the carriers that we were doing the service for wanted to buy that for their own engineers. Mm -hmm. um, so we ended up selling this equipment. We were only game in town, so it made it really easy to sell. Great. Um, and that's what I worked on there as I was selling the test equipment. It was it was awesome. It was great. Um, the whole industry was just in the very beginning. I mean, it was just getting started. Mm -hmm. um, and I would travel all over the place. And you don't have mobile phones because we were putting up the network. So, you know, you get out your map. Okay, where do I go? Okay, got to go here. And, and, you know, when I came to Qualcomm, uh, I came here to manage our commercial tools business. So we had tools mm -hmm. already and I came in to manage that. And um, what was great is just our whole environment at Qualcomm is definitely innovation, you know, in kind of enabling you and encouraging right. you to run with your new ideas. Mm -hmm. And from the whole uh, tools side of things and test equipment and drive testing the networks, which is where I was focused, um, we started to come up with other ideas. There's got to be better ways to do this than get in a car and drive around. And <laughs> right. So I'm like, there's got to be a better way. Um, although they still do that to some extent today, um, the idea and where the patents that I, I have issued today come from is having your device do more of the, the network performance. Um, so Mary, tell us a little bit about uh, your career path and where you come from and where you are today. Okay, <laughs> um, let's see. We, you were asking me earlier about my educational background and I think you were a little surprised to hear that I am a uh, liberal arts major <laughs> um, who sort of got into electronics accidentally. Um, I graduated from college, I moved out to California, I had a friend and I needed a job. They said, oh, my friend works at a contract manufacturer. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> said they need somebody to do expediting or something. And this was back in the days when, did you remember that source book? There was like this, and cause I mean, this was a long time ago and you would have to, um, 
look up who carried which kind of manufacturer. So <laughs> if your job was to buy a resistor or a capacitor, you would look up, you know, Rome or AVX or whatever and say, oh, it's, it's available at DigiKey or Air or Avnet. And then you would call and you say, I need this part number. <laughs> wow. And it'd be this gigantically long number. <laughs> and it would be a capacitor. And I'm like, I don't know what a capacitor is. And this is a big, long number. And I need it tomorrow. And you better send it. And I had no idea. I mean, I was never a person who tinkered or opened anything else. And when you said, somebody said, like, here's a cir printed circuit board assembly, I'm like, I've never seen that in my life. You <laughs> That's know? how and it looks yeah. like underneath that plastic. <laughs> and it's really strange to be in the, an environment my whole career with these people who have always been really mm -hmm. interested in taking things apart and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I'm just kind of like, mm, I do not belong here. Mm -hmm. Like, which one of you don't belong? <laughs> Um, but so after, you know, it's been 20 something years, 25 years of doing this, yeah. you know, you kind of by osmosis get these things, mm -hmm. um, understand kind of what they're doing and, and that yeah. kind of stuff. So, um, but my background started out doing expediting, then purchasing, then sort of program management, mm -hmm. then sales. And then I started my own contract manufacturer and then, um, that had some issues, so then I went to work for an OEM, a startup OEM, uh, a couple of those, and um, there was a, a relationship between a bunch of these companies and mm -hmm. MIT, and that's how I got to meet Lady Ada, and that's how I ended up at Adafruit. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, so why don't we talk a little bit about Dragon Board. Can you tell us about what that is, how it came to be? Yeah, so how um, Dragon Board started was, um, we needed to create a, a board for the component vendors in the mobile space. So the different companies that provide the different components around ours for a mobile phone, like for uh, accelerometer, different ty types of sensors, cameras, memory, um, and enabling them to be able to easily buy a board and develop their drivers for their part. Mm -hmm. So. We made that available, and we need, wanted to make it available publicly. We actually worked with a um, another company to do that as well, and it turned out that all kinds of random companies were buying it from not just companies but government. Mm -hmm. You know, it was all over the place, and and that's when they um, these companies ended up calling us and wanting to purchase our products and um, and discovering that, you know, that their volumes were much smaller mm -hmm. and we had to, you know, figure out how to enable them in other ways. What is the process to get samples and production quantities for your chips? So we have our business model for mobile where we work um, directly with um, the mobile suppliers, which there's a finite number of them. Right. But when you go to these new industries and uh, new type of companies, it, it's, there's, you know, sky's the limit mm -hmm. um, with fragmented kind of requirements. Everybody is needs something different. So um, what we um, had to do is change our business model and how we enable our products so these companies can take advantage of it. So we worked with um, several companies, uh, and many more now, but that's how we started. And they create these buttoned up modules to take the development burden off mm -hmm. a lot of these companies initially. So we, we are the supplier of mm -hmm. Snapdragon. We do the whole, um, it's called a system on a chip. Right. And um, within that chip, we have integrated inside this nice little package. There's a, um, we call it GPU, um, a graphics processing unit. Mm -hmm. We have video, we have the, the, the connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS. Um, all in one chip. All in one chip. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. And they also serve as sort of like a, a program manager in a way. And because there's, our chip is just one piece of developing the <laughs> whole product. There's, right. you know, not to mention all the other parts, the memory and every mm -hmm. camera, whatever else you want to put around your product. But then there's also the whole software development, the manufacturing, yeah. the certifications. So mm -hmm. they help bring all that together for the customer to get their product to market. Right. Great. Yeah, modules are so fabulous for people that want to develop new products because they don't, I mean, there's no way a startup company could develop something, all those man hours into a Snapdragon kind of thing and all the certifications. And the price is now at a point where 
you can actually just use that module in yeah. your product because you have enough, you'll have enough margin in it and you don't have to buy all the components separately and it's all right. pre certified and the software is done. Yep. And it's just like, this is how people are able to develop products and start businesses yep. where, you know, back in the day that just, just couldn't happen. Yeah, it's uh, kind of enabling innovation and invention, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting. That's great. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the most exciting uses that you've uh, seen with Snapdragon? It's all over the map. I mean, there's, I can't, we can't even, there's no theme. There, everyone wants something different. There's, because yeah. in mobile, it's generally the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. One of the ones that I'm personally really excited about is um, Open Source Robotics Foundation uh -huh. um, has been using the, the Dragon Board for their um, porting the ROS, which is Robotics Operating System. In their second generation of their Turtle Bot, uh, have now used the Dragon Board as part of their Turtle Bot. Cool. Which is so, it, which is Dragon Board is perfect because it is Snapdragon comes from the mobile side, which power mm -hmm. is extremely important. So, yes. and yeah. that translates as well to uh, these other um, industries that can, including robotics, where power is, is yeah. important. So, Snapdragon is perfect for those sorts of applications. And so, now having it in this Turtle Bot, which you know, Open Source Robotics Foundation sponsors is really nice. So you see new kind of like different robotics applications out there. No, and I think that speaks to the quality and usability of the platform that, you know, so many different people can use it for so many different things. Right. Um, and it, you know, is relevant and works with all of them. Awesome. Exciting. I got a question on the Dragon Board. Uh-huh. So you designed it in-house. Yes. The, and then how did you decide to partner up with Aero to do the manufacturing and be the, are they, are they the sole distributor for Yeah, Dragon so they Board? actually, so we, um, we designed it in-house and then we um, transferred the design to Aero and so they manufacture it. Um, and working with Aero, having the supply chain, working with the other component suppliers of the products that go on the board itself. So they were able to get the cost down from a manufacturing standpoint. And then managing the distribution to many of these companies that they sell it to. And that's just not typically what we do is working with um, you know, end users to distribute products. So it didn't really, it was, kind of back to that business model. This was a more scalable approach to getting the board out there. And How do you handle a new version of the chip if it has, ch you know, it's advancing and changing and so now that high volume mm -hmm. is, a, is a new version and these people are designing with this older version and maybe you're not going to be making that anymore in those extremely high volumes? That's a, that's a great question and that's a part of what my team and I did is um, so our mobile roadmap is constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, many derivative chips and we actually work directly with our customers to even create chips with their feedback. I mean, right. they have a large influence over our roadmap. Oh, that's great. So we had to select um, our chips and we are, Qualcomm already is pretty far advanced in the features that we offer. From a process node, we talk about Moore's mm -hmm. Law. Um, we, we are definitely on the cutting edge of offering that latest. So even our chipsets that we offer for our embedded program that fall a little behind where we are in mobile, those still are advanced for um, where the industry is. So those have, have a long life in itself and we actually ensure that we have long life with that hardware, that product for 10 years. For example, we make a public commitment to support the product for 10 years. Um, but we do um, are very much involved, especially when it comes to the software and the software support and um, doing updates to it. And there's a whole community forum around the board too on 96 boards. Um, and we, we are always monitoring it. I have a couple folks that are on there all the time. Cool. If the question doesn't get answered by someone in the community, they'll pop in or if they don't know the answer, they'll find it out. So we really try to be you know, diligent about making sure that questions don't go unanswered. Yeah, the community aspect Yeah, of exactly. It is, yeah, that's awesome. I think that Adafruit has, you know, a really strong community as well that, you know, we have our technical support forums too. And, you know, even if it's not one of our engineers who are answering the questions, we'll have other people from the community like coming in to help each other out. Yeah. It's, it's really cool to see. 
That, that's exactly right. And getting to that point takes mm -hmm. time, but when you're there, you're like, wow, this is so great. It's wow, awesome. It's, yeah, it's like a self self-driving machine. Yeah, and it yeah. continues to snowball. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no stopping it now. You right. know, it, as long as you, we continue to make it available mm -hmm. and it's a positive experience, hopefully, for everybody, then it will, it will just continue to grow independent of anything we do. Yeah. Taking on a life of its own. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, like. the, the whole culture around sharing information yeah. is um, somewhat new, but it's just, uh, you know, grown so much, I think, in the past, like, 10 years, even. Yeah. Um, and this sharing information is, you know, not something that's, you know, been typical in the past and right. that hasn't been big. So, you know, it's been a big movement in our company to provide more information more publicly and because mm -hmm. that is where things are moving. And you, what you find is actually you get more out of your product by doing that. Exactly. Than you yep. would if you were to have to manage it yourself because you can't think of everything. Yeah, exactly. One thing that I think both Adafruit and Qualcomm have in common is that, um, you know, we're, both companies are really uh, devoted to STEM education and, um, you know, encouraging kids to get interested in STEM fields. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what Qualcomm has in terms of STEM initiatives um, for educators and, you know, kids who are wanting to learn about STEM? One of the areas is the Think a Bit Lab mm -hmm. um, that we have, and um, where kids from all different backgrounds, no matter you know different ages, can come in, and they have a whole lab set up where you can play with the technology, and you know you can innovate. Yeah, you know, that's and awesome. encouraging that. Yeah, so they can like come in and and build projects, and you know make robots make you know things move use servos right microcontrollers learn all about that and i think that um you know that really helps show the the fun inside of invention and and i think that can spark a lot of imagination in kids too exactly yeah so